Once upon a time, there walked a bookworm of a dwarf. Mr. Flintbranch, as I recall correct. He was on the road with his family to find a place far up north, where there is mostly white and green and creeks of icy sheen. Where one might if lucky, in a clearing or two, be witness to a ball high in the sky, with dances so energetic, they combust into colorful painting, like silent fireworks between mountains and trees, which only the patient will see. Below, the needles and leaves, here he walked, yet when he looked up found nothing but quiet and steps left in the white. He gasped and the cold filled his throat, he got lost in his book and fell behind the rest. They would be warm and eating, singing under the trees, and well deserved after a long starving hike. Happy to have reached the place he sought, not even aware of the things that he had read. He picked up his pace, for once in his life, prodding through the white, looking out for their tracks. He knew he would find them, yet in what state that would be. When the prints in the snow got fresher, he knew he was close. He'd broken into a run, well, that was a first. He caught his scarf on some branches, and ironically, he couldn't catch his breath. When he finally stood up straight and looked around, something caught his eye. At first, he thought they were taking a bath in a stream close by, and in a joyful spirit, left their clothing in miserable bundles around the camp but then hit the smell of fresh berries that spread out on toast, and there was a flicker of fire left burning the stove. He noticed the leftover stew in the pot, which he was sure his brothers would have never forgot. It had always been survival of the fittest, and the youngest usually lost. That was when Mr. Flintbranch realized they hadn't come bathing and those sparkling flocks of dust weren't minute flies that hang around his stinking brothers as always. What he had read was correct and had suddenly come true. While he found his way back as fast as he could, here, the magical forest had asked for help. For a handful of dwarfs had done wrong to her and made her upset. The trees are dear and the resonant animals are precious. Through her canopy of needles, she looked up above. She prayed and pleaded. Dear remnants of the sun, still your dance of spectacle and light, to help us mere florals and set things right. The light complied when it was asked, yet left one alone. With one caveat, he takes up the throne. Mr. Flint Branch walked straight into a legend, and he soon recognized. Furiously, he started to turn pages. It was something he had just read, a spell or a vining, the last hope if you will. He mouthed the words and raced from page to page. When he finally found the answer, he hiccuped from relief. He unraveled his scarf, which had already been reduced to bare threads. Even though he was angry with them and owed nothing to his brothers, he began his knitting process. Careful to put only positive intent into his work, which was surprisingly easier than he would have imagined. He'd even gone to the river and found the most smooth and shiny black beads, more than they could have asked for. Mr. Flintbranch knew what he was doing. He gently asked for permission to use the beats for a noble purpose. When he got back and his knit work was halfway done, he began the painstaking process of stuffing the fluffy friends with the sparkling dust. While he kept sewing them up, the flow was more important than the precision. The spell would sort it out, which probably was a good time to start the binding spell. Mr. Flintbranch shoved all his built-up anger aside and spoke repeatedly with clear and positive intention. Captured their essence and sewed them in cloth to save them from drifting to the glow up above. A sigh of relief sounded after he soon realized this was only half the promise fulfilled. Mr. Flintbranch instructed his fluffy friends to clean up the camp and prepare a table as large as they could manage, for he had an announcement to make. When the table was finished, and he had double-checked the tome he was reading for the next spell, he bellowed, 
a gesture of will, we have set up a feast. Invite all the birds, the critter and beasts. Which was followed by a howl, and everything that lay on the table started to vibrate. Luckily, the food was served after all the residents of the forest had arrived. Mr. Flynnbranch opened the feast with the promising words To an old and noble tradition, reborn tonight. Every year from then on, Mr. Flynn Branch and his fluffy friends deliver presents and meals to everyone in and around the forest. You might have heard of him. I want to wish you all happy holidays and a wonderful ending of the year. If you enjoyed this little Christmas story, subscribe to the channel, like the video. That will make the ending of my year absolutely fantastic. And I will see you later. Stay creative. Ciao.